Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Since it's election season, we're working towards educating you on what's happening in politics. Our next guest is looking to make waves in the political arena. She served as a city councilor in Houston, Texas, and now she's currently campaigning in a U.S. Senate race. Please welcome Amanda Edwards to the Yay! circle. Thank you so much for being so here. Yes. yes. So you've gone from being an attorney into politics. Mm. Where did your desire to, to go into public service come from? I think my, my desire to go into public service really related to my purpose of empowering people and communities. Mm -hmm. It does you no good just to come into an environment and it be the same as it was before you were there. It's, yes. uh, it's about going there, investing, and making it better than it was before, helping it to realize its potential. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's been a really rewarding experience for me. I started off practicing and of course I ran for office. I represented about 2.3 million Texans yeah. uh, over the last four years and we've managed to get a lot accomplished. So it's also not about campaign speeches, mm -hmm. it's about actually doing the work the people are elected you to do. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. good. Well, what would you say your biggest accomplishment is in politics right now? You know, interestingly enough, uh, fi after 51 inches of rainfall came across our community mm. with Hurricane Harvey, I learned that there were a number of our senior citizens uh, that were not taking the walls out of their homes. Uh, and, you know, they had soiled, it had been soiled by flood water, mm. but instead of removing them, they said, oh, it already dried. And of course, as you might know, yeah. there's mold. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And so I mobilized yeah. hundreds of volunteers to go out and connect them to uh, nonprofits and also to connect them to volunteers who could help them. But the thing that was deeply troubling and helped me to decide to run for this office was when we'd step foot on those doorsteps and they'd see me as an elected and they'd say to me, oh, are you up for re-election? Mm, mm, and the, wow. the thing that was telling about that was that there was a sense that surely if your elected official is there and it's not, it can't be because they're, they're just there to help, to help right, you, right. they've got to be needing something from you. Mm. And usually we're there debiting from them, may I have your vote, yeah. mm -hmm. et cetera, as opposed to depositing into our communities. Yes. And so that paradigm is one of brokenness that I think we can reverse that course and make it about people and the results for people. And oh, so yes, that yes, part yes. of this is why I'm running for the United States Senate. Yes. Yes. Now, and, and, and we're so excited that you are. Um, you would be making history if you win this election as the first black woman in the Senate in Texas. Mm. How does that make you feel? And, and I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this would be making history. It's 2020. That means there's, I mean, there's never been a black woman in Senate in Texas. Yes. What does I that mean, mean for you? Well, first, I think it's, it's important for us to recognize what it means for others as well. Mm -hmm. And for a young woman, a young girl, to see somebody who looks like her be able to open that door, walk through it, and keep that door open for the next young woman or young girl, yes. I think is important. I think also it's, it's also a sim, it's symbolic, but it also is a very powerful statement about the, the face and the, of, of power in this nation is changing, mm -hmm. and the face of service in this nation is changing. So we saw that, if you recall, the State of the Union and all the women wearing white, it was a very strong visual yes, it was. Mm -hmm. for us to see that wave of change coming in. And so yeah. with this election, with coming from Texas, which has been the, a mainstay for uh, Republican support for many, many years, mm -hmm. and for that not only to have the state flip blue, but someone who looks like me to be part of that movement and the, and the front of that movement, yeah. I think not only speaks volumes for the people living in the state, it's a national statement yes. about where we're heading as a country mm -hmm. and what leadership can mean for us. Yes. Yeah. yes, yes, yes. So why do you feel politics on a local, national level are so important? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, life is not about being a spectator. If you want to have commentary and opinions, you got to get involved. Mm -hmm. If you want to see the change, you've got to be a part of making that happen. Mm -hmm. So many times you see people say, "Well, why isn't so and so in, you know, running for this office?" Or they need to have support. And so having an opportunity to actually get involved, make a difference, affect change from a policy standpoint yes. mm -hmm. is critically important. Now there are a variety of arenas, right? You can be a nonprofit work, you can do a lot of things that that aid in meaningful change, but for me, my calling related to making sure our policies and the folks in government did the very best they could to put the people first and, of course, to actually deliver 
on those results because yeah. again I, I always go back to it does you no good to have just a campaign promise yes. and if nobody's yes, delivering on that campaign promise mm -hmm. it's right time now. to start taking that wall down of what happens during campaign time and then actually make that happen on the other side yeah. so when we come back to you it's not oh can you vote for me again I'm sorry we didn't get that done it's look what we did right. together Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, just really quick, if you can, maybe 30 seconds, what's your, what's your message to the millennials? Absolutely. Well, one of the things that we saw in the 18 cycle when Beto ran, he did a <laughs> remarkable job of galvanizing people, what we call persuadable voters, mm -hmm. uh, which are folks who are in the middle, independent voters, etc., suburban voters, mm -hmm. and he got them in the fold. But what we also learned was that there were communities of color that had registered in high numbers but didn't come back out in high numbers. Right. And the same thing held true with people under well, the age of 35. If and if and you're so staying with us for the full hour, Sorry. we will hear more from Amanda and her vision for our nation to keep up with the following it. Amanda for Houston on Instagram. Conversations always continue on all social media platforms. Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. We're still joined by Amanda Edwards, who is looking to become the first black woman to hold a Senate seat for Texas. Absolutely. Yes. yes. But be before we um, go on to another question, I definitely want to go back to the millennial question that we ended on. Mm -hmm. um, expound a little bit more on that. What are you really going to do, or what do you think needs to take place to really get younger people involved, with you being a millennial yourself? Absolutely. So I am a millennial, and one of the things that I think is deeply troubling for millennials happens to be student debt. Mm -hmm. uh, that is an Child, issue where <laughs> you, you, you <laughs> see so today. many folks mm -hmm. who are basically paying the equivalent of what would be a mortgage mm -hmm. before they've even gone to an open house. They have not had an opportunity to realize that aspect of the American dream. Yeah. And so you've got to have candidates who not only are talking about that, but have plans for addressing it. So in my case, I want to make sure that we're getting to the public and private schools mm -hmm. and saying to them as the federal government, if we are giving you grant dollars yes. as the federal government, you need to put some cost controls on your tuition. Mm -hmm. And that has to happen because you've got to yeah. continue to put band-aids on the issue, if not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Can't tell you how many times when I was back in school, my tuition went up. Mm. <laughs> crazy. Still crazy. Seriously, I think I got $5,000 left over steel. <laughs> <laughs> that's a shame because I really shouldn't have that. That's on me, though. That's really on me. <laughs> what about you embark on the Democratic debate? And we've already lost uh, Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. And uh, we lost Cory Booker. Mm -hmm. last night. Mm -hmm. Who do you think is on the front as the front runner that, ha that has the best interest of the African American people? I think that's a question that we have to answer depending upon what your particular priorities mm -hmm. are. So for a lot of people they'll say, oh well the African American community they care about criminal justice issues. And a lot of people do. But it's not just criminal justice. Some, a lot of folks are looking for people who can provide access to health care mm -hmm. coverage, right? Looking for how do they sure. support their families and economic opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I think the various candidates, they have different stances on that. And so it really becomes a question of what works best for you and your family enables you to thrive and who is putting you at the center of their vision for the future of this country? That's the question you have to answer, is who's got you and your minds and your interests mm. in the center of their, their platform, and who can demonstrate that they've delivered some results in that respect? Results. Mm -hmm. Results, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's good. Problem. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much going on in the White House now with impeachment and what's going on in Iran and Iraq. What can we, what should be the focus, mm -hmm. I mean focus for, uh, voters, when they go to the polls, what should we be looking for specifically? I mean, what, what should be in mind, aside from our own personal interests, what are some of the things that we should be thinking about, about what's going on right now in legislation? Absolutely. So when you're looking at the office of the president, mm -hmm. that is your commander in chief. Yes. So when you think about who should be calling the ch shots on international affairs, you need to be thinking about that wisely. My God. It is not just to make a political statement mm -hmm. when you vote. You've got to think about all the functions of that yes. role mm -hmm. and what that means. What is our standing in international affairs? Are we now in more peril than we were before yeah. as a result of who we're electing as our president? That's the first question. Mm -hmm. The second question is, what is your platform? Mm -hmm. And and so if you think the, the country will move <clears throat> forward with a platform that deals with economic opportunity, deals with criminal justice issues, deals with uh, health care access, and some of the other critical issues that people find, then those are the folks that you want to move forward. People who have meaningful plans mm -hmm. that you believe will actually carry them through. It's not, again, good enough just to have a discussion. The question then you must ask is how will you do those things? Mm -hmm. People like to talk about them in broad themes, yeah. but you want to understand 
what will this mean for me really? Because you're gonna be the one who is holding the bag at the end of the day. When you're looking at your Senate candidates like me, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you would be looking at not only what are, what are my elements on my platform, what is her vision for the future, why should I believe her? Mm -hmm. And so looking at having a track record of delivering results and success for people, but also making sure that we have also those judicial appointments that need to be confirmed. That's a big deal, and the Senate has to make those confirmations. We are now in an impeachment uh, yeah. uh, proceedings right now. The Senate, the Senate will have to make a decision yeah. on what will happen and whether President Trump is removed. Yeah. Uh, Amanda, I just want to know really quickly, why is it important for the American people to vote? Now, we, we all know the, the surface reason, but a lot of people say, oh, my vote doesn't count. What, what, did, what do you have to say about that to debunk that myth? Every, your, every single vote counts. Now, I understand why a number of people feel concerned about the Electoral College, mm -hmm. which, is per, right. which pertains mm -hmm. to the president, mm -hmm. the office of the president. Um, that is a concern. I think we need to revisit that. Yes. Um, because what we saw mm -hmm. is that we have now a president who was elected via the Electoral, electoral yes. College yes. rather yes. than the popular, popular vote. vote. Mm -hmm. So that is a concern. But when you look at every single other office, when then you look at the Senate, you look at the congressional seats, and you look at your state representatives, all of the rest, your local elected officials, your vote, each vote counts towards that person getting elected. There's no separate veil of electoral college votes mm. that does not count in that context. And so in looking at that, you've got to make sure that when you want to be cast and part of that history and somebody, how did they count your vote? You don't want to be the point <coughs> person who'd silenced their own voice. Yeah. Yeah. When I talked about the last election cycle in Texas, most people think Texas is super red. It's not ready to change. That last sec election cycle for the Senate race, Beto came within 215,000 votes. Mm -hmm. Texas has 29 million people in it. Mm. That's not that many, it's not, it's not really not that many votes. All. It's ready to flip. But if somebody stays at home this election cycle, it just might not. Mm. Let's talk about the African-American female vote. So in 2012, we had 70% of African-American females who went out to the polls voted. But that number fell off in 2016 to 64%. Why do you think that is? And what do we need to do to activate those women again? Nice. People have to continue to be part of the movement to move mm. forward in this, this country. And so I think we noticed with certain of the elections going on across the country that black women have been the backbone of the Democratic Party. Hmm. Sure. And I, I'll say that again. Yeah, you should. Black women have been <laughs> the backbone of the Democratic Party, a very constant, consistent mm -hmm. voting block. But also, they need to hear how you're addressing their lives. And it's not just issues based on race. Mm -hmm. Again, yeah. it's the issues you take care of a family. You have children. You want to hear about education. Mm -hmm. You want to hear about health care. You want to hear about equality. economic opportunity. Right. You want to hear about gender equality. Mm -hmm. You want to hear about the issues that are impacting your day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. And that's got to be part of the platforms of all all of those who are seeking out our votes. Yes. Amanda? Amanda the people in Texas? Talk, right? <laughs> she she <laughs> wants to talk you, about you it. You see, <laughs> going on. she is going to deliver the results, Yes, in my opinion. How about that? You can keep up with Amanda Edwards and her campaign by following her on Instagram at Amanda for Houston. Let's give it up for Amanda Edwards.